Hello. Hey. Hey, man. How are you? Oh, good, man. It's nice to talk to you. Your name is Jacob? Jason. Jason. I'm so sorry. That's okay. It's okay. Uh, yeah. And my co-host is Ben. How you doing, man? I'm, I'm, I'm doing great. What's your name, Ben? Yes, sir. Yeah, Ben and Jason. Okay. Oh, okay, Ben and Jason. No, I'm doing great. I just got done exercising, and now I'm laying down here with my dog. I know. <laughs> I, I, I was going to bring that up in the interview. Okay, so um, we're pre-recording. Um, is there is there anything you don't want to talk? I mean, I don't really want to talk about any kind of lawsuit. You know, nothing negative. I was kind of well, wanting I tell to go. You, you can you can bring up whatever you want. Well, I don't. I don't. Happens. I wanted to keep it kind of uh, positive and not focus on any of the negative stuff that happened. Oh, whatever. You, I tell you what, you take it whichever way you want to take it. Doesn't matter to me. Okay. Well, like I say, I, I just want to kind of focus more on the positive side. You know, not not okay. get into the you know any of the okay. the bad stuff. But uh, you know, all right. So. <clears throat> Looks like our levels are good, and uh, yeah. If you just want to talk about the old music and stuff like that, yeah, we got some, we, we got some questions and, and and some stuff. Yeah. Oh, you yeah. have questions? Okay, good. Yeah, oh, I was yeah, supposed to send away. them to you. I forgot. I didn't send them to you. Dang it! But you, it's okay. No, it's no problem. It's probably not any questions you haven't been asked already. Well, <laughs> don't ask me. Don't ask, <laughs> don't ask me how the band got his name. <laughs> no, no, that's that's too easy. Okay. I mean, spot, spend a second on Google and figure it out yourself. Yeah, <laughs> but all right. Well, so we're gonna go ahead and start. All right, this is all Chemical right. City. <clears throat> this is Chemical City Radio, and we have from Leonard Skinner, Mr. Ed King. How you doing, man? I'm doing fantastic. Awesome. How are you? Oh, we're great. Uh, the weather's fine down here in South Louisiana. How are you doing up there in Tennessee? No, oh, it's uh, kind of a warm day, overcast, but. Uh... It's been nice. It's been a lot of rain, but it's okay. I like the rain. Oh, we had a ton of rain, which uh, hopefully we sent your way because uh, it, it totally ruined my garden and everything else. Yeah, it was brutal yeah. there for a few yeah. minutes. Yeah, we it rained here for like two weeks straight. Oh, well, yeah, we haven't gotten that. <laughs> <laughs> but, <laughs> well, good, but, man. Uh, I'm, yeah. I'm, I'm, I'm glad uh, to get you on the show. You know, I, 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 did, I did ask you once, and you said no, and then I kind of hit you up again. And you were like, well, okay, and I, I know you, you're not a big fan of doing interviews, but. Well, I, I do them sometimes. It's just sometimes I get, I get stuck into one that I, I mean, I'm in it, and I, I want to get out of it. Ah, well, and that's hey, the only hey. reason I don't. And hopefully this won't happen today. Well, if it does, just tell us, hey, you know, I'm hanging up now. <laughs> okay. All right. Yeah. <laughs> we can do that. Yeah, we won't, we won't get mad. <laughs> yeah. But, okay, well, let's, uh, I mean, we'll just go through the, uh, you know, you, you were in one of the, you know, all-time biggest bands. And, you know, everybody has a place for Skinner and, and you know, a time period and something that connected their lives to that. But you actually started in California in a different band that I, I talked to my dad and uh, he's more your age. <laughs> your dad. And How old's your dad? He's uh, 63. Oh, man. no, no, he's 64. Okay. He's 64. And he said, right coming, out of high, com coming out of high school, his favorite band was Strawberry Alarm Clock. Oh, okay. And well, that was a, that was a number one record around the uh, third week of November, 1967. That was my, my first real band. I was 17 when I started that. Oh, you were young. Yeah. And our first, uh, actually, we had had a few records out under previous band names, but that was the first record we released as Strawberry Alarm Clock and it went to number one. Well, I'm just going to be honest with you. I went and listened to it last night and I texted my dad back and I said, uh, y'all must have been on a lot of drugs because it, it, I, I... <laughs> we, we must have been what? Now, when I listened to it, I, I told my dad he must have been on a lot of drugs. If that was his favorite band coming out of high school. Oh, <laughs> well, I tell you what, the, the lead singer on the record never joined the band. That's one thing I always regretted. He had his own band in town and none of us could really sing the song. So we invited him over. He was friends of ours and he ended up doing the vocal, but he didn't want to join the band. So we had our drummer sing the song live. It was kind of a bogus thing in my mind the whole time I was there. But I had a great time while I was there. I mean, we did two tours with the Beach Boys and some of the gigs were really good. Awesome. And I was only 18 and it was time of my life, really. That's crazy. How long? Actually, it actually that time exceeded as far as enjoyment it exceeded the time I spent with Skinner, actually. And how did you wind up with Skinner going for you were on the West Coast? A, yeah, that's kind of a long story, but I'll try and break it down. I think the year was 1970. 
And there was a bogus strawberry alarm clock band that was going that was going around the South booking shows. So we got wind of it and they had booked a whole college tour and all these great gigs. So we figured, well, we're bankrupt. We may as well do the show ourselves. So we did. We started down there and uh, Leonard Skinner was our opening act. Oh, wow. Yeah. And me and Ronnie got on real well. We spent a lot of time talking and and uh, one night. Uh, one afternoon, actually, he called me at the hotel and invited me down to this club where they were rehearsing. He said, we just wrote a new song. And I had been on their backs to, for them to write stuff because they were doing all cover tunes. They actually had two originals that were really pretty good. So anyway, I go down to this club about two o'clock in the afternoon and they're all set up. And I sit right in front of the stage. I was the only one there besides them. And they play me this song called Need All My Friends. And when they played that and Ronnie sung that, I just I wanted to be a part of that band. And I told him, if you know, if you guys ever need a guitar player, or bass player, I hope you look me up. And one day he did. Yeah, he did. Yeah. And I, I actually one day I was listening to something, some Skinner, and I, I actually sent you a message because I did not realize that you played bass on the first album. And I thought yes. I just assumed Leon did. And I remember I sent you a message and I said, was it a Rickenbacker or a P bass? And you were like, no, it's a 65 uh, jazz. Yeah, jazz bass. And yeah. I just, I didn't, I, I had no clue. Because I, I knew you had played guitar, but I didn't know you played bass on the first album. And I, I totally took some of your bass lines and used them. So just, I, I thought I, I, thought I was bass. stealing Leon's and I wound up stealing yours. So I appreciate that. Oh, well, Leon, Leon was a great bass player because when I was playing bass in the band, one day he came out at rehearsals. And I'd never met Leon. I'd never heard Leon play. And the guys wanted to play this song for me that I'd never heard called Simple Man. So Leon picked up the bass and he played it. And I'm thinking to myself this whole time, oh, well, that's your bass player. It's not me. Right. I mean, Leon's your Leon's bass player, you know. So I felt bad ever since then because I just knew I was uh, I was a square peg. <laughs> Is that when you, you know, made the round transition? Round type thing, you know. And so anyway, after we recorded uh, Simple Man, Ronnie fired me. Uh, and, and, bass, and, and I remember, in the, and when I sent you that message about the uh, '65 Jazz, you 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 didn't play bass on Tuesday's Gone, and that's one no. of my favorite songs. And you said you didn't even like that song. I was shocked. No, I didn't <laughs> write it. I didn't. I didn't play bass on it. I think I overdubbed some little guitar thing over Billy's piano solo a little bit. Yeah. I just couldn't get a feel for that song. To me, it was eight and a half minutes of pure boredom. Oh, <laughs> just, I love it. <laughs> oh, it's just too long. Okay, let me put it to you this way. Won't Get Fooled Again is eight and a half minutes. Right. What song am I going to listen to? Won't Get Fooled Again or Tuesday's Gone? Please, hey, man. You have a point. Well, yeah. It's way more energetic. <laughs> <laughs> no, I think, of course, I think Won't Get Fooled Again belongs in the rock and roll time capsule. Yeah. I think it's the greatest rock and roll song ever. Yeah. Well, uh, was that after the uh, the Simple Man stuff? Is that when you transitioned to guitar? What's that now? After you finished the uh, the, uh, the the bass. Simple Man stuff on on bass, and he fired you on guitar on bass. Is that when you transitioned to guitar? Yeah, the the next day. Okay. So he fired you. But actually, you? actually, we took a actually I'll tell you when when I got fired on the bass, they actually took a day off from rehearsal, and that was unusual because we never did. We just always played. And that day they went out to this ice cream factory where Leon was working and they talked Leon into coming back. So we took that one day off and the next day we were there at 8.30 in the morning and the first tune we wrote with Leon on bass was Sweet Home Alabama. Which, I mean, that, uh, I mean, that's you that counted it off. Everybody knows that story. That's you going one, yeah. two, three. Right. And I guess uh, the engineer probably just said, that's cool, leave it in there. I could see where that... And... Yeah. <laughs> well, Al Cooper had started off the count off in the first album. So we figured, well, we'll just continue it with a second album. Okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. And then on the third album, I think Cooper also counts off Saturday Night Special, so we did it on all three albums. Right. And I mean, uh, you, how does it feel? You know, I, I've heard Sweet Home Alabama ten billion times, but to have yeah, a song, me too. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, more than me. No, it ne- it doesn't bother me. I mean, it's I think it's a, it's I know for sure it's an inspired song, and just the fact that I know that means it's just inspiring to listen to it sounds inspiring it feels inspiring well i mean it's part of of the world dna i mean that song is ingrained <laughs> every you know May everybody it yeah yes. and, and that's gonna outlive all of us and May that that's a pretty be. cool thing you know yeah it is i 
don't don't think that I don't remind myself every day about that. Right. You know, I mean, because we're, we're musicians ourselves and I, I could write something that could live on, you know, longer yeah. than me and, and be, you know, so many people have mem- married to, you know, every. I'm sure you well, get messages all the time about, oh, oh, oh all the time. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, after we wrote Sweet Home, as soon as we finished putting it together, like one of the last times we played it that day, Ronnie came up to me and said, well, there's our rambling man. Yeah. yeah. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> yes. Well, it actually, were the Allman Brothers the big boys at that time? A big influence? Were they, were, really. were they, no, I'm saying, actually, were they, were still, were they I, the bigger band at the time? Oh, a bigger band? Well, yeah. Okay. Yeah, they were. Dwayne, Dwayne had been dead a couple of years. Okay. Um, but uh, yeah, the Almonds are still big, and Ramblin' Man was a real big song, and uh, we were glad to knock it off its perch, actually. Well, yeah, that's the one that really broke y'all, I guess was my point. That's the one that took y'all to like the next level. Uh, Alabama? Yeah. Oh, yeah, and it took Ramblin' Ramble Man was the only big hit that Almonds had. Yeah. I well, mean, it was kind of uh, it was it was kind of cool that Ronnie told that to me, said that to me because I think it made a lot of sense. Mm-hmm. And it's actually what uh, the state of Alabama's uh, song. Well, I don't know if it's been voted in yet. <laughs> well, it uh, should be. <laughs> I was. It's funny. I was friends with a governor, and then they changed governor, so I don't know what's going on. Well, you know, it's funny. All the bands that when I see a band cover it down here, they go "Sweet Home Louisiana." No, oh, yeah, and yeah, they just, just change it. They change it to suit our state. Yeah. But uh, okay, so how was um, you know, you, you said writing and all that. All that was done at the Hell House, right? Every bit of it, yeah, yeah. And I've seen some videos, and that looked like a great place to be. It was hot. It was close quarters, but uh, we got we got work done in there. Uh, there was no air conditioning. We sweat. <laughs> we sweat like crazy, like animals. But we got work done in there. Because I think we arrived every morning. We just couldn't wait to hear what song we were going to write that day. And that's the truth. That's a big motivator. It wasn't about money or anything. It was just, wow, what are we going to write today? Right. That's awesome. Are we all actually I living think, there? Or did y'all, y'all just showed up every well, day? Actually, to go I had work? to live there. Actually, the first week, my initiation was to live there. <laughs> you were that guy on the couch? <laughs> I was a guy on the couch. <laughs> Had one hundred watt bulb hanging from the ceiling, <laughs> and uh, it was really hot. I remember one day, one day in the morning, a gator came up on shore. We lived, we it was right next to this creek. I mean, I was out in the boonies, man. Right, a guy it from was, Cali out in the boonies. <laughs> oh yeah, straight from Southern California out to Hell House <laughs> in the middle of the night. Culture no, shot. for a whole week. Yeah, so uh, that was an experience. I couldn't wait for the band to arrive every morning. Fortunately, they got there real early. So, yeah, yeah. And then after all that, I guess uh, apparently um, you just got tired of being on the road and just, you know, checked out. I mean, because you did the bass on the first album, then you played guitar on the second yeah. and third, and then you kind of just checked out after that. I thought the band everything got real crazy, you know, yeah. and. I don't know. I just had this crazy idea that this was not going to end well. I saw a lot of really evil stuff. Yeah. And I just said, uh, you know, this really can't go on. And so one day I just, I packed it in. Okay. And I, I always felt bad about how I did it. Cause I just kind of got up and left, but I knew I'd made up my mind and I knew that if I went against my decision, I would never leave. Right. And I felt I should leave. Yeah. Okay. Well, it was a pretty strong conviction, I got to tell you. It was a hard decision to make. And uh, not not to go into anything really, you know, negative. I mean, and of course, mm-hmm. you know, if we if we don't bring up the plane crash, you know, everybody would say, "Why didn't you bring it up?" But uh, you know, you left, and then the plane crash happened, and that has had to be maybe a kind of a maybe I made the right decision, or you know, it was definitely that. It was definitely that. I even though I kind of felt things wouldn't end well, I never envisioned. Well, no. Anything like a plane crash. That was just, I figured someone might die. Um, I, I could just see that happening. But the plane crash, even though I was shocked, I wasn't surprised. Um, and I went down, I drove down to the funeral, to Ronnie's funeral. And uh, yeah, I was uh, I was glad I wasn't there for that. Well, of course. I mean, but, you know, 
Was- it's just, it was such a weird thing. Steve Gaines, he took my place and died in the crash, was also born on September 14, 1949. So that was not lost on me, believe me. Right. Anyway, that's that. Yeah. Um, let's see where we at. Uh, like I said, we're editing this thing. Um, okay. When y'all came back, you played yeah. some of the first shows after after the crash. Well, you actually, happened. yeah, you played on the first show, which we're, we're right outside of Baton Rouge, Louisiana, which is where the... Oh, I remember that show. Well, yeah. Oh, we, well, wait a minute. Was that in 87, was it? That was the first show. You came back in 91, actually. Oh, oh, you didn't play the first show in Baton Rouge? Well, I was with them in 87. Okay, so actually, yeah, from the, from the plane crash, the next show was Baton Rouge. Oh, and, okay. And we're like I say, we're oh, right yeah. out. We're right outside of Baton Rouge, and uh, oh, I remember that now. Yes, yes, I remember that. And if, yeah. if you had the original ticket from then, they you got in. It. Yeah, they still honored it, and that was a really cool thing. So well, <laughs> yeah, yeah, I mean that was pretty cool. I I don't know who actually held on their ticket that long. I guess a lot of people did, but uh, oh, I think a lot of people did. Yeah, because I guess it was very uh, sentimental at that point. But how was it yeah. playing that first show? That oh, it was. It was good. The whole tour was was good. It was a good therapeutic thing for me. I probably shouldn't have stayed as long as I did, but it was very therapeutic. Yeah. Okay. Um, last year, about but- the only about the only thing negative I can think about it was I had to play Steve Gaines guitar parts, and they're really hard. I mean, they're, <laughs> yeah. I didn't. I I knew I'd heard them before, but I know a little. I'm never going to play that again because I just butcher it. <laughs> Well, I want to ask one question. Speaking of that, guitar parts, did you do the slide on Curtis Lowe? Yes. Oh, what about Mr. Banker? Yes. <laughs> oh man, I'm gonna te- <laughs> later on tonight. I'm gonna take te- a friend of mine did a cover on a lap steel of uh, Mr. Uh-huh. Banker solo. Yeah, I'm gonna send you that. And uh, actually, around okay. this show, we're gonna play some uh, Skinner covers because everybody's heard our, you know, all the Skinner songs. So. Mm-hmm. There's some really good covers out. There. I don't know if you ever go on the internet and listen to them. Probably not. You got Garth people. Brooks does a good Sweet Home Alabama. Garth Brooks is a great musician. I get I get I, a lot uh, of crap heard, over him, but I I still think yeah. he's wonderful. Yeah, I heard it on the radio a couple weeks ago, and I said, "Well, that sounds pretty good." Yeah. All right, For what, a country singer. <laughs> all right. Well, I, I see you uh, collect a lot of guitars, actually. Yeah. How many I, guitars do I've you actually a, own now? I have a, a affliction. <laughs> You're like Rick. Uh, Nielsen. Have, are you, are you friends with uh, Rick Nielsen from Cheap Trick? Uh, I've never met Rick Nielsen. No. Okay, because he's got yeah. like I, I have no clue how he he's got a. Problem. Oh, there are people that have far more than me. Yeah. But uh, <laughs> I saw you I put mean, a I'm picture a, up of uh, some 1927 Martins the other day. Yeah, that was a, a new baby I got. <laughs> it just doesn't stop with me. Uh, <laughs> what are uh, what are some of your 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 jewels of your collection? You know, like some of your favorites that you have. Well, I have a couple of Les Pauls that I really like. I have uh, an old beat up, probably my best guitar in the whole lot is my beat up '57 Black Stratocaster, nice. totally beat, oh. and it just it, it just plays like nothing else I have. Feels and like sounds home. just yeah, just a ama- an amazing guitar. That's how guitars are for me. When I I can pick up a guitar and know when I pick it up, put it in my hand if I like it or not, right off the bat. Oh yeah, me too. Actually, there's one guitar I bought at Carter's a couple of years ago. It was an SG Standard, a '64, really good year for those. Yeah. And I picked it up. I played one chord, and I said sold. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I mean, I just knew that thing just rang like a bell and had such resonance to it. Right, like say I. So sometimes you just know, and I hate to let those get away because there's so many crappy guitars out there that. <laughs> Boy, some of the good ones, and I've got a lot of good ones that just really play great, you know. So, but Ed, what are you you going to do with my toys? What are you going to do with all these guitars? I mean, uh, you're going to be gone one day, or you're just going to? I just think my wife will get rid of them, (laughs) (laughs) and she'll she'll enjoy the fruits of my labor. (laughs) (laughs) That's going to be her retirement. (laughs) (laughs) I'm sure Sweet Home Alabama made a few dollars too. So I've seen pictures of your house and stuff. It looks like you're uh, you're living pretty good up there, man. I'm very, let me tell you, I'm the most grateful guitar player you never met until now. <laughs> you just met me. I'm very thank, I'm very thankful for everything I have, believe me. Yeah. Uh, okay, well, man, I know you got a lot going on, and we got some other interviews to get to, but I appreciate you coming on. My uncle actually wanted me to ask you a question. He, he sure. was a big fan. He wanted to ask yeah. about that amusement park in uh, Jacksonville. Do you know if that's still 
I don't know anything about that. You don't know anything about that? Okay. No. Well, we'll probably just edit that part right out of the show. <laughs> <laughs> I, no, no he was saying there was some that. kind of amusement. He, he, I don't know. I, I got you on my phone, and it's actually in my text on my phone. I don't think I can look at it. But, uh, man, I appreciate you. Can't help out. you there. I'm sorry. Yeah. <laughs> like I say, well, let's do it. An end tag. I, like, Ed, I, I really appreciate you coming on, man. And it, I think my pleasure, man. I'll send uh, you. Best of luck to you and Ben. Okay, well, look, look, let's, you, look, let's do a proper tag. Um. All right, well, Ed, I appreciate you coming on, and, um, you know, I appreciate you spending time with us on Chemical City Radio, and uh, you have a great day, man. It was my pleasure. I wish you and Ben all the luck in the world. All right, thanks, brother. Thank you, sir. Later. All right, bye. We okay? <laughs>